Before you buy a new snare because you think you need something higher, deeper, deader, or ringier, follow these steps today so that you can really see what your current snare is actually capable of achieving. You might be surprised because some of these don't even involve tuning. Hey everybody, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. So here are the tools that we're gonna to be using today. Snare cutout, bandana, gaff tape, tuning key. That's really all we need. So first I'm just gonna show you where our home base is or where we're starting, um, just for reference with the snare sound. So for our first sound we want to do, it's just a quick, deep, beefy kind of snare sound. I'm calling it deep and dead, but it's not extremely dead, honestly. And what we're going to do first is just throw this cutout on it and see how much of a difference this makes. So that's really the first way to do it. But what I would rather do is actually tune it down a little bit. And there's really a couple different ways we could do that. First, we gotta take the lug locks off. The first shortcut for doing that is literally just tuning out a couple of the lugs. That right there pretty much gets us there where I've loosened this lug completely, I've loosened this one about halfway. And so that's, that's a pretty low dead sound. And so that's the quick way with tuning to, to get things there. But it's still not totally ideal because ideally we still have the drum in tune with itself pretty much and we tune everything down. So let's do that. That's pretty low. And I'm gonna stick this loop of tape back on it just to deaden it a little bit more because that's the kind of sound I like when going for this tuning. Yeah. I like that. I think this would be a good default low beefy sound. By the way, this is a six and a half by 14 snare. I think it's just made of steel. It is nothing fancy. This is a really simple snare, not expensive, and you could get one just like this and achieve all these same sounds with it. It's a good universal size for doing this. I really like that sound and I think it's really fun to play slow, big, beefy kind of rock and roll grooves with that type of snare tone. Now let's raise things back up a bit and talk about how we can get a hip hop funk sound. So if we had had the tuning back where it originally was, I think we could have gotten in the ballpark without doing any retuning. Because again, that's our goal, to figure out some quick ways to do this and then maybe more involved ways if that can get us even closer. So let's say this was our default. This was the tuning we were at. Well, let's just tighten the snares up, which I've got this little switch here on the side that makes it easy to do that. And they're suddenly super tight. Now, for good measure, really, okay, that's the quickest way to get that tight sound maybe, but I think we can make it even drier and even more of that Motown kind of hip hop sound if we put a strip of tape across the snare wires on the underside. So it's worth going to a little bit of extra effort to do that. I'm gonna try to do it without looking and just see if I can lay it across the snare wires. That's the goal. Ideally, you don't wanna to have to take your snare off the stand. I just got it in the middle, going straight across. Nothing fancy. Wow, super dead now. Now, the annoying thing is we've got a little bit of this ring going on up here. So we could say, okay, that's our first way to get close to a, a really dry, short, um, really a tacky kind of funky hip hop snare sound, but... I think we can do better. We're gonna tune a little bit higher. So what we had so far, that would work, but we can make it better. I kind of like this, where it's high enough that that ring isn't annoying, and instead it just adds some tone. And I do still have my jingles here on it. Let's, I'll play it with and without the jingles.
So now in order to go short and electronic, really we can leave the tuning kind of high where it's at. I'm not gonna touch it, although this would work fine with it a little bit lower. So again, this is one you could get to probably without retuning. At this point, we want to remove the tape from the underside. So for this, yeah, I'm just gonna lay it across what we have. And somewhere I've got a magnet, there it is. I use this little, kind of like a refrigerator magnet to stick this onto the drum so it doesn't come off. Keep the snares tight. And we've got a pretty cool, really dead, dead snare sound that's really cool for a lot of songs. I think it's really practical. So that's a really fun, easy one to do. All you need is a bandana. You can probably get these at Walmart or the dollar store. I don't know where this one came from, but it's been my go-to favorite for a long time. Lastly, let's do the loud and ringy sound. So we're, of course, throwing the jingles off. We don't want that. We're taking the tape off. We don't want anything hindering it. That's okay. I'm gonna see what happens if we tune this a little higher. This is one of those sounds where it's like you almost can't go too high. You can keep tuning up and up and you kind of, it just makes the ring more complex. What I like to play around with, and I'll do some more of this as I listen to it, sometimes if the fundamental pitch of the ring is too much, I'll just start playing around with one or two of the lugs and it'll kind of help break that up in the same way that we detuned a lug earlier to get the dead sound because it cuts off the drum circulation basically. We can do that now to really mess with that fundamental pitch so it's a more complex overtone. Hey, I really hope this video helped you out and provided you with some valuable information to help you get good snare sounds, especially on the fly on a gig. If this did help you out, I hope that you'll subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and I hope you'll share the video. Thanks guys, as always, so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.